just like without eating further from Sue's time. So the floor is yours, Sue. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for the nice introduction. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, Yes, as, as, uh, as introduced, I'm CU, I'm from ETH, and today I will talk about generating 3D humans interacting with 3D things. Let me check this, yeah. So uh, in recent years, many high quality data set of 3D indoor things has been proposed, such as Metapod 3D and Replica. They use 3D scanning and reconstruction technologies to create digital 3D environment. Also, embodied agents exist inside 3D environment, such as habitat simulator, allowing people to perform, uh, for example, scene understanding from embodied views. This is very useful for uh, autonomous navigation and augmented reality. But if you take a closer look at this environment, a limitation of them is that they don't contain people. The reason such world contains no people is that there is no fully automated tools to generate realistic people interacting realistically with 3D scene. And manually doing this requires significant artist effort. Therefore, a very in interesting research direction uh, is to auto automatic automate, uh, automatically generate natural and realistic 3D human body in and motion in such environment. Well, we are not the first one to synthesize human scene interaction. The PyGraph paper proposed in uh, CGraph learn a model connecting human pose and arrangement of 3D object in an environment. And in Lee at our ICCV19, they use a 3D pose synthesizer to generate uh, training data by learning to put human stick figures uh, into a scene. While these are all very exciting works, they also have limitations. Uh, for example, they have limited post diversity, and also it, it, is, it is hard to model detailed human scene interactions that are both physically and semantically plausible. And this is a result from our method. So given a 3D environment, our model aims to generate realistic human bodies that interact with scene realistically. So briefly speaking, our solution is inspired by how human infer plausible interaction with environment. So when a person enter a room, the interaction plan might depend on the structure and the semantic of the room of the uh, scene. And afterwards, to realize the interaction plan, physical rules will apply to determine the detailed uh, human object configuration. Therefore, our method has two steps. So the first one is a realistic, uh, a probabilistic human body generator, and then uh, interaction-based optimizer. And in the following, I will talk about the detail of these two steps. So to design a body generator, the first question is how to represent the environment and how to represent the body. So we represent the scene from the view of our embedded, uh, embodied agent as, uh, as used in the habitat simulator. We capture the scene and depths uh, and semantics as our scene representation because they are valu very valuable modality for scene understanding. And we use the simple X to represent 3D body. So based on these representations, we propose a joint model of human scene interaction using a conditional variational autoencoder framework. So during the inference time, given a scene depth and semantics, uh, semantic images of, a, of an empty room, we can sample from our CVE model to obtain various human bodies. So the sampled human body sometimes has a physically implausible configura configuration, for example, floating in the air of have collisions with environment. So as the example on the, uh, on the left figure. In, then in the second step, we refine the body mesh with an optimization step defined as here. So which encourage the contact between the body and the environment and helps to avoid interpenetration between the body and the scene surface. And at the same time, try, we try uh, not to uh, deviate, deviate much from the generated poses. So in the paper, we have uh, 
uh, quantitatively evaluate the proposed approach in terms of physical and semantic plausibility of the random generated bodies. And we also perform the perceptual study. Please check the paper for the details. And here I show a VR demo. Uh, and uh, this is what you see from, the, from a VR headset. And all these bodies are uh, generated by our uh, uh, generative model. And you can see these bodies uh, interact with uh, environment re realistically. Yeah. But there are also failure cases when we sample from the simple CVE model and the optimization steps doesn't really help with the realism. So the next question is how do we make this generation process more reliable? How do we avoid this kind of failure case uh, in, the, in our model? So we published a follow-up work called PLACE, which largely improves the result. So here I, sh I show the result from PLACE. So for each row here, uh, we, we generate two samples from PLACE, and then the middle are actually by, uh, by basically interpolating in the latent space. So you can see the results actually are quite uh, stable. So the key observation of place is that human interact with the world through the bodies in contact. So to explicitly represent the physical contact between the body and the world uh, uh, is essential for modeling human scene interaction. So to that end, we propose a novel inter interaction representation, which explicitly encodes the distance and the proximity between the body and the 3D uh, scene around it, around the body. So the code is avail available in this GitHub page. If you are interested in it, feel free to generate 3D virtual humans for your digital rooms. So place generates great results. Uh, but one thing is that it cannot efficiently handle person-person interpenetration when we generate a uh, lot of people in the room. So these are randomly generated uh, bodies uh, from the place model, and you can see lots of person-person uh, interpenetration happening here. And here is another example. So these are all random sampled bodies. Uh, each individual looks more or less realistic interacting with the environment but they have lots of interpenetrations between them. So in order to effectively prevent human seeing and the human human inter interpenetrations, we propose LEAP. It's a new network architecture for learning articulated occupancy of people. And it will be uh, presented this year at CVPR, I think on Thursday. So our method is able to represent multiple uh, persons and to generalize well to unseen humans. All these subjects are represented by LEAP. So modeling neural avatars as implicit functions is a rising research topic in the community. So there are lots of works here. I just showed two of them. So NASA is among the first who proposed to uh, model neural avatars as articulate implicit functions. And Scanimate built a closed human body model uh, from full scans. These are all very exciting achievements, but both rely on per subject training. And the key challenge we studied in LEAP is how to build generalizable neural implicit representations that can model a diverse set of human poses and shapes. So we follow the good practice of traditional body modeling techniques and build our occupancy model in the canonical pose. The second idea is to learn a generalized uh, linear blank skinning function to transform any query point in the post space to the canonical space, where we can conveniently perform the reliable occupancy check. So the input to our system is a set of bone transformations and they are first transformed by three encoders to a global feature vector that incorporates information about human shape, structure, and pose. And then this feature is customized for each bone by per bone learnable layer, linear layer. And on the other side, the input query point in the post space is projected to the canonical pose via the inverse linear blank skinning network that predicts the skinning weights as an intermediate step. 
And these sparse weights are used to create a local point feature as a weighted average of the bone features. And last, an occupancy multi-layer perceptual predict whether the quarry point is located inside the human geometry by taking as input the estimated uh, a canonical point, the associated local point feature, an additional feature that is based on a cycle distance. So for the additional cycle distance feature, we introduce another linear blend skinning network that maps the estimated canonical point in the, in the canonical pose to the post space. And then defining a cycle as a distance between this new point and the corresponding query point. So this additional cycle distance feature benefits a lot the generalization of our method and produce significantly fewer artifacts. The displayed close up uh, animation shows that our model captures the pose dependent deformation in the canonical pose. So compared to the baseline, the reconstruction quality of our method is significantly better and is able to express details like fingers and face. And where our method outperforms the baseline across all settings and evaluation metrics by a large margin. So LEAP can be easily inter integrated into uh, learning optimization pipelines that require an efficient occupancy check to resolve collisions with other geometry flexibly represented as point cloud. Here we show example uh, application of LEAP. So the place model I talked I talked before gen, uh, generate realistic human bodies in scenes. However, it requires pre-computed SDF to avoid collisions with geometry, scene geometries, and often generate an, uh, unrealistically penetrated humans when multiple people are generated in a single scene. So LIB is able to effectively prevent interpenetrations with other people and the mesh-based geometry without requiring pre-computed SDF. So LIB will be, as I said, will be presented next Thursday. The code is released. It's compatible with simple families. Uh, please feel free to use it to model the neural occupancy of your simple bodies. So far, I have been talking about generating human bodies that are interacting with the environment. Another important aspect of understanding human behavior is to understand hand-object interaction. And in this grasping field work, we study how to learn powerful representations to model realistic human grasps. So before we go to the details, I want to show you the generated human grasps from our, uh, from our model. So these are all test objects now have never been seen during the training, and this, ha this hand are generated by our generative model. So human hand object interaction has been studied in many places, for example, in robotics, in computer vision, and also in computer graphics. Our key observation is again, the human grasping is rooted in the physical hand object co contact. Through this contact, human hands are able to grasp and manipulate object naturally. So to better model hand object interaction, we must find a way to effectively represent the contact between the hand and the object. So we propose a new interaction representation that is based on regressing a continuous function. We call it grasping field. So the grasping field maps any 3D, 3D point to 2D space, where each dimension of the 2D space uh, indicates the sign distance to the surface of the hand and to the object, respectively. For example, this point, XYZ, uh, will be mapped by the grasping, grasping field function to DH and DO. And DH, DO basically are the sign, sign distance to the object and to the, to the hand. And in this way, the contact and interpenetration relations between the hand and object can be explicitly represented. Because for example, if both dh and d0 equals zero, it means this, this 3D point is really at the contact regions between the hand and object. So we further, as you see here, we further, we further use the deep neural networks to parameterize the grasping field and learn it from data. The learned grasping field can be considered as an interaction prior 
which enable us to infer various grasping uh, poses of hand only based on the 3D object. So here I want to sh briefly show you how to use this grasping field for grasp generation. So the input to our model is the point cloud of object. And then our model basically can sample different grasps, hand grasps for this given object. So a little bit into the detail during the training for both and hands, we, we, use, we use point cloud representation and we use a point cloud encoder to encode the hand and object. And then now the grasping field is a decoder in the decoder part. This grasping field not, not, not just takes a query point, for example, PI, it also takes a latent representation Z. And then this grasping field tells, tells us the distance uh, of PI to the surface of the hand and surface to the object. During the inference, given the novel object, we again use point cloud encoder to encode the object. And now we sample from a Gaussian distribution because this, we, we learned this as a uh, variational autoencoder. And now basically given a novel object, we can sample different hand grasps. So the, the, ha the hand surface get from our representation is actually a, a static SDF. But so this is what you see after the marching cube. You can see it looks like a hand, but doesn't have a nice hand surface because it doesn't have know anything about hand. It's just a static SDF. And what we did is we fit a parametric uh, uh, hand model mano uh, into this SDF. So we get nice looking hand. Please know during the fitting, we, we didn't use any interpenetration contact term. So, the, so if one, do have the interpenetration contact term here, I think the result can be further improved. So we compare our method with, uh, with uh, baselines uh, uh, on different data sets. And we also uh, compare, we also uh, uh, and try to understand the physical and semantic plausibility of, of the generated method. And we also perform the perceptual study. Please check the paper for the details. So, so far we have been talking about human body generation and hand generation, but they are all static. Naturally, the next step is motion modeling and generation. So towards this goal, we proposed the module. We are more than our joints, predicting, pre, uh, predicting how 3D human body moves. So in this CVPR work, our goal is to predict a diverse set of, diverse set of plausible motions in the near future, given the past motion of a person. So for motion prediction, lots of previous work use only a skeleton to represent human body and only show skeleton motion prediction. However, as time progresses, the skeleton can become less and less human in proportion so that at the end of the sequence, the skeleton rarely corresponds to a valid human body. People also use, uh, for example, here, surface-based uh, human body model, for example, simple, by predicting the drawn rotations of the body model. The advantage is that they directly get the valid human body, but they don't. But often they don't include global tra trajectories because combining the global trajectory and the local pose is very hard. On the other hand, the advantage of the 3D joint-based modeling, like this one, this one, uh, is that it's it is straightforward to combine the global trajectory and the local pose because they are. They are all unified in the 3D joint location type of representation. Now the question is, how do we combine the advantage of both? Meaning effectively combine the global motion and the local articulation at the same time produce valid and realistic 3D human bodies instead of skeleton. So to this end, we represent the 3D body motion with a sparse set of surface marker corresponding to those used in the motion capture systems. Predicting markers has several advantages. First, it captures a full degree of freedom of body poses and straightforwardly models the global trajectory and local pose in Euclidean space, which makes the learning much easier. Second, we can leverage a powerful statistical body shape model like simple during the inference to directly get valid human body. And third, the motion, the motion model is di directly compatible with motion capture data. 
So in in the nutshell, Mojo is a condition uh, is a conditional variational autoencoder with a recurrent projection. So given the past motion of a person represented by 3D marker locations, as you see here, the encoder is a gated recurrent unit, preserves the full body, uh, full temporal resolution of the input. And a straightforward way of predicting the future motion is that the decoder will take the latent representation from the encoder, a random sample uh, from the prior and the prediction, for example, from the pre previous time step to generate the 3D body markers location for the current step. The problem here is RNN tend to accumulate errors over time. So the predicted markers can, gradu can gradually deviate from a valid 3D body, resulting in twisted torsos, foot skating, and many other problems. So to el eliminate the accumulated errors, we exploit the fact that valid bodies lies on a low dimensional manifold in Euclidean space of the markers. So whenever the RN perform a prediction step, the solution actually tend to leave this manifold. Therefore, at each prediction step, we project the markers back to the manifold by fitting a simple X-body mesh into the pre predicted markers. So at each step, we have a projection in, 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 the, uh, in between. Since the body marker provides rich body constraints and we start close to the solution, the fitting process is efficient. From our recursive projection scheme, we not only obtain the regularized markers, we also uh, obtain the realistic 3D human bodies. So here are the general result, uh, uh, predicted result. From what, uh, from what, uh, so what I show here is basically a, a simplified architecture. In order to generate a diverse uh, set of motion, we also propose to incorporate a latent DCT space into the VE model and sample from the latent frequency explicitly to introduce a high frequency component into the generated motion. Please check the paper for this type of details. So these are the generated uh, predicted result. So the, uh, the, the, uh, the blue bodies are the input and the red bodies are the predicted motions. And you can see the motion are quite diverse. This is more uh, result. And you can see by using this latent uh, frequency space, you can see our, our, we can generate high frequency motions, for example, on the hand part, which we don't observe when we don't really use the uh, uh, frequency domain. And this is more result. So you can see by uh, projecting the markers back to the valid body, uh, uh, we, we don't have much foot skating. So the general motion is much more realistic. Okay, so those videos are from, Mo, uh, from Mojo and this video shows an extension of Mojo. So instead of just predicting a few seconds as most people do and as Mojo do, now what we can do is to generate very long human motion also called perpetual motion. And you can see like on the right, on the left side it's just a one instance of the generation. And this is basically this video is three minutes long but actually the generation can, can, can really, like this person can basically moving forever for a very long time. And on the right side, you can see we put uh, uh, multiple people in the blender. So they basically, these people just walk doing something random in this 3D space. So this virtual humans is really exploring this 3D space. So I think this is very exciting. The next question is how to build a semantic control into the Jarity model so that this virtual humans start to do something semantically meaningful. Nevertheless, I think the result exciting and it is fun to watch this never stopping motion of these virtual humans. So Mojo will be uh, presented this Tuesday. Please come by if you are interested in it and the code is released. So uh, summary. Today, what I talked about, are, I think baby steps towards generating realistic virtual humans in the digital world. We are still very far from this goal and there are many uh, uh, challenges. For instance, 
uh, how to capture complex human activities. I think GR is here, probably he will talk about it. And also how, uh, how to build controllable generative models and how to model human-human interaction. And in the end, I would like to thank my PhD students, postdocs, and my collaborators. And thank you for your listening. Thanks for the nice talk. Uh, are there any questions? So, see, so I had a question. Um, so, you, you've achieved like impressive results just by using statistical models, although you're doing a lot of uh, human scene interactions, human. Um, which is applications that one would think like physics would play like a like a role, but you don't do any physics, um, which is not differentiable. And so, do you, do you actually need physics at all? Because you showed us that you can get away without it. Uh, I I think we should. I think I think the the very a very interesting direction would be to combine physics with this data driven type of approach. So, uh, so we still have like, for example, our genetic models still have like this interpenetration with the environment. And it's for some examples, we still have foot skating and interpenetration. And when, for example, the, the, the last video I show, oh, I don't see here. The last video I showed here, oh, you don't see that anymore probably, but it's fine. So we, we still have like lots of uh, like uh, uh, violations of physical rules. So I think the right direction or the right way to do that is to combine the physics and data-driven approach. Okay, we got a next question for uh, in chat. What is the next step for grasping field? Yeah, uh, so uh, yeah, I think there will be a paper as soon, very soon on archive uh, or work on archive. So basically, you, I showed like this. These are the studies. Uh, these are like uh, um, uh, uh, like a, a static uh, SDF, right? So it's not really a hand model. And I think the next, like the 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 natural step would be to to really have a like a like to have a, a hand model with SDF. So the neural implicit models for hand. So that 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 is the next step. Interesting. Looking forward to that paper. But yes. thank you to you, and uh, we'll move on to our next speaker, which is uh, Gerard Bonswald. So it's my great pleasure to uh, welcome Gerard Bonswald. Gerard 